small parallel we had finished it. Two or maybe we have two parallels. Okay. Archana Ji can start and uh, 24 of you are there. Today Kiran has sent a message that she is traveling so she won't be there. So naturally, yeah. Yasmin doesn't have the touch. Do you? I've got a book today. Oh, you have. Very good. Then I you have the book today. Okay. So first Archanadi will read, then next you will read. Sure, sure. Okay. Okay, Go ahead. But, but there are variations in the range of these various forms of sacrifice. The physical offering, the lowest. The sacrifice of knowledge, the highest. Knowledge is that in which all this action culminates. Not any lower knowledge, but the highest self-knowledge and God knowledge. That which we can learn from those who know the true principles of existence. That by possessing which we shall not fall again into the bewilderment of the mind's ignorance and into its bondage to mere sense knowledge and to the inferior activity of the desires and passions. The knowledge in which all culminates is that by which thou shalt see all existences becoming Bhutani without exception in the self, then in me. For the self is that one immutable, all pervading, all containing, self existent reality or Brahman hidden behind our mental being, into which our consciousness widens out when it is liberated from the ego. We come to see all beings as becoming Bhutani within that one self existence. So he is talking about the gradations. Okay? So always these gradations are very important. We must keep in mind. There is slow upward climb and a slow downward descent also. Everything. Of everything. Of substance, of consciousness, of uh, power and also of ananda. Everything. There is a gradation. So... We read carefully now what he is saying. But there are gradations in the range of these various forms of sacrifice. If you remember in the prayers and meditations, Mother has in her own handwriting, it is uh, reproduced. There are some who offer their money, some who offer um, objects. Okay, Many people used to offer chocolates and cheese and all these things to Mother. And she used to redistribute them. Okay. Yeah. Many people used to give sars, uh, dhotis, and pens to serve the. Okay. Once Amal gave, I think, a dhoti, and he asked him how the quality was. And Sri Ramdha said, very fine. And he also gave a, a pen to serve the ones. So these are all objects. So physical offering is the lowest. And psychologically, if you offer yourself, that's the best. The sacrifice of knowledge, the highest. <laughs> so as uh, I was saying, in the prayers and meditations, Mother says some give their, some objects, some give their money, some give their um, thoughts, they that. Finally, there are some who give entirely all of themselves. And to them, the divine gives himself fully. So, so this physical offering is the lowest. The sacrifice of knowledge the highest. Okay. He is telling you about the Gita. Okay, I don't think he agrees always that the knowledge is the highest because he gives great importance to love. So also does the Gita also. In fact, it is love that takes you to the highest pool for them. Okay. Knowledge is that in which all this action culminates. Okay. So that is in uh, chapter 4, verse 33, 35. Okay. 33 and 35. And I have to see the next page. <clears throat> Knowledge is that in which all this action continues. You come to know the divine fully. Not any lower knowledge. Lower knowledge is scientific knowledge of the physical world. Okay. Geological knowledge, medical knowledge. Okay. Um, uh, Biological knowledge, all these are all lower knowledge. Not any lower knowledge, but the highest self-knowledge and God-knowledge. Knowing yourself and knowing God. 
knowing yourself is the individual at the lowest level and knowing god is at the highest level transcendent cosmic and individual that which we can learn from those who know the true principles of things of existence that by possessing which we shall not fall again into the bewilderment of the mind's ignorance and into its bondage to mere sense knowledge and to the inferior activity of the desires and passions but what happens is the first time you experience your consciousness rising to the spiritual planes it's a wonderful experience but no all of you all of the sadhak is not ready so they will fall back and you have to assimilate and uh, digest the experience that you had and then the automatically the being gets prepared and then you rise again so there is a series of uh, repeated experiences until finally it gets stabilized so his term possession is when it is experience is stabilized okay that means from that plane of consciousness now you cannot come down okay so that's it that's possession so simply saying when you possess that we shall not fall again into the bewilderment of the mind's ignorance and into its bondage to mere sense knowledge <clears throat> we are absolutely bound to our senses the ego is there to ensure that that happens but if once you have the experience the memory of it is so so powerful and so intense that you want nothing else in life so the first opening is very important also <clears throat> by possessing which we shall not fall again into the bewilderment of the mind's ignorance and into the bondage to mere sense knowledge and to the inferior activity of the desires and passions so when you have a desire you start trying to satisfy it. that's a inferior activity and the passions also when you get angry you start justifying your anger and also take suitable action so that your passion is satisfied that is inferior activity the knowledge in which all culminates is that which now shall see all in so when you say that you have a, a got knowledge what is that so that is what he is saying now we come back to the famous many in the one one in the many and one becoming the many this is the in the upanishad that is the uh, description so thou shall see all existences without exception in the self then in me now what is that the self is level 2 okay the spiritual planes of consciousness then in me okay atha <laughs> mai he says so that me is the third level which is the purushottama remember in the gita the three levels are very clear the first level is the kshara purusha your psychic being which is down in the physical world and it is mutating okay in the akshara consciousness level 2 there is no mutation there is only immutability absolute static condition because you are only witness all the action is taking place below at level 1 then when you rise to the third level purushottama level 3 then then in me this is so shrimad so goran quoting this very often because the three levels and when you go to the third level all these things you start seeing you see the one in the many that means you see the divine in everything and you see everything in the divine okay you are global and everything is included in your own consciousness and then finally you also see that the divine himself has become everything in life divine chapter 1 the first page itself which is that matter is a fit robe is a fit clothing for the divine then next he says it is not only fit clothing it is itself the divine so matter is the divine in different forms how to understand that again we go back to the famous example of ice water water vapor essentially the same taking three different forms okay so that completes the paragraph
Now we come to the last paragraph of the chapter. The significance of sacrifice. So, Yasmin, if you have the text, you can read. Yes. <laughs> but this self, for immutable Brahman, we see to, to be the self presentation to our essential physiological, uh, psychological consciousness of a supreme being who is the source of our existence and of whom all that is mutable or immutable is the manifestation. He is God, the divine, the Purushottama. To him we offer everything as a sacrifice. Into his hands we give up our actions. In his existence we live and move, unified with him in our nature and with all existence in him. We become one soul and one power of being with him and with all beings. With his supreme reality, we identify and uni unite our self-being by work done for sacrifice. Eliminating desire, we arrive at knowledge and at the soul's possession of itself. By work done in self-knowledge and God-knowledge, we are liberated into the unity, peace and joy of the divine existence. Yeah. So, here's the third level. So, here is very clearly. But this self, or immutable Brahman, we see too, to be self-presentation to our essential psychological consciousness of the Supreme Being, who is the source of our existence and of whom all that is mutable or immutable is the manifestation. So, at the highest level, you can think of it as a supermind, you can think of it as the Ishwara, you can think of it as the master of works, okay? And you can also think of it as a Purushottama. It's all the same. So at that level, what happens? By this self or immutable Brahman, very clearly level two, the spiritual planes of consciousness. Okay, We see two to be self-presentation to our essential psychological consciousness. Note the word essential psychological consciousness because at our level, we have a mental consciousness. We also have a little bit of a vital consciousness and even a body consciousness. The body is conscious, it has also nothing by itself. So these are not essential. So when he says essential psychological consciousness, he is talking of the soul. Okay, very clearly. So when we enter into our soul, we see that the level one and level two are only representations of level three. Okay, that's what he is saying. We see two to be the self-presentation. Okay self-presentation. You present yourself as an image to our essential psychological consciousness of the Supreme Being. The Supreme Being is level 3. Purushottama or Ishwara. So the word Ishwara. Who is the source of our existence and of whom all that is mutable level 1, immutable level 2 is the manifestation. So level 1 and level 2 are manifestations of the Supreme being, the Purushottama. He is God, the divine, the Purushottama. Note these uh, words. When he says he is God, it implies that there is a personal aspect. Okay? God is naturally, you think of him as a personal aspect. So at the Purushottama level, the divine is personal as well as impersonal. Okay, so, he is God, the Divine, the Purushottam. To Him, we offer everything as a sacrifice. This is the last paragraph of the chapter and He is making you see the what He is going to tell you in the next one. So, the next chapter is exactly this. The Lord of the sacrifice. To whom all the, even if you sacrifice to the lower gods, ultimately all it reaches only to Him. Okay? That's what He said also. To him, we offer everything as a sacrifice. In his hands, we give up our actions. In his existence, we live and move. 
when you possess knowledge fully, then you the three levels, the one in the many, the many in the one, and the one becoming the many is not a theory or an idea. It becomes an absolute fact. So that is when you can live in him. There are, you can experience him, but you are not living in him. You are seeing God and you have relations with him, but you are not living in him. But at the third level, you absolutely live in him. Okay, that's what he said. In his existence, we live and move, united with him in our nature and with all existence in him. We become one soul and one power of being with him. So our power, our consciousness, everything is his consciousness. Perfect identity. That's what he said. Remember in the Love Divine, we are reading about the knowledge by identity. So here you become God. <laughs> you absolutely become God. Not at the, at your, the essential consciousness becomes God. Not your body, mind, life. Obviously not. <laughs> so, <clears throat> nature in We become one soul and one power of being with him and with all beings. So we become also, we see all beings as part of yourself or yourself in all of them. With his supreme reality, we identify and unite our self-being. So, he now he uses the word identity. Identify. With his supreme reality, we identify and unite our self-being. That self-being is your true individuality. By works done or sacrifice, by eliminating desire, we arrive at knowledge and at the soul's possession of itself. Now, that's interesting. Very often he uses the word possession. When you possess something, you are fully master of that. You are completely, it is under your control. So to possess your soul means to be absolutely master of yourself. By works done in self-knowledge and God-knowledge, we are liberated into the unity, peace, and joy of the divine existence. So, he is not speaking here of power, but power also is very much there. So, we can now go to chapter 13, the Lord of the Sacrifice. To whom is the sacrifice being given? Okay. It is a supreme. Okay? So, uh, Shilpa, can read the next one. Tarika was there in the beginning. Yes. Suddenly she disappeared and she has come again. <laughs> no, my internet went away. My internet is not there. Okay. So, so the Lord of the Sahaja, Shilpa, if you have the time. Yes. Yeah, it's a very big panel, one and a half pages. We'll do that. Okay. Sure. Let's read. Shall I read? Yes, please. The Lord of the we have before, the Lord of the sacrifice. We have before we can proceed further to gather up all that has been said in its main principles. The whole of the Gita's gospel of works rests upon its idea of sacrifice and contains, in fact, the control, the, the eternal connecting truth of God and the world and works. The human mind ceases ordinarily. Only fragmentary notions and standpoints of a many-sided eternal truth of existence and build upon them its various theories of life and ethics and religion, stressing this or that sign or appearance. But to some eternity of it, it must always tend to reawaken whenever it returns in an age of large enlightenment to any entire and synthetic relation of its world knowledge with its God knowledge and self knowledge. The gospel of the Gita reposes upon this fundamental Vedantic truth that all being is the one Brahman and all existence the wheel of Brahman. A divine movement opening out from God and returning to God. All is expressive activity of nature 
and nature a power of the divine which works out of out the consciousness and will of the divine soul master of our works and inhabitant of our forms it is for his satisfaction that she descends into the absorption of the forms of things and the works of life and mind and returns again through mind and self knowledge to the conscious possession of the soul that dwells within her there is first an involving of self and all it is or means in an evolution of phenomena there is afterwards an evolution of self a revelation of all it is and means all that is hidden and yet suggested by the phenomenal creation this cycle of nature could not be what it is but for the purusha assuming and maintaining simultaneously three eternal poises each of which is necessary to the totality of this action it must manifest itself in the mutable and there we see it the finite the many all existence sarva bhutam it appears to us as the finite personality of this million creatures with their infinite diversities and various relations and it appears to us behind this as the soul and force of the action of the gods that is to say the cosmic powers and qualities of the divine which presides over the workings of the life of the universe and continues to our perception different universal forms of the one existence or it may be various self statements of personality of the one supreme person <laughs> then secret behind and within all forms of existence we perceive too an immutable and infinite a timeless a impersonal a one unexchanging spirit of existence an indiv- indivisible self of all that is in which all this many find themselves to be really one and therefore by returning to that the active finite personality of the individual being discovers that it can release itself into a silent largeness of universality and the peace and the poise of an immutable and unattached unity with all that proceeds from and is supported by this indivisible infinite or even he may escape into it from individual existence but the highest secret of all uttamam rahasyam is the purushottama this is the supreme divine god who possesses both the infinite and finite in whom the personal and impersonal the one self and many existence being and becoming the world action and the super cosmic peace pravarti and nivrutti meet are united are possessed together and in each other in god all things find their secret truth and their absolute reconciliation okay big para and what shrinva does normally is uh, everywhere when all his books in the first paragraph he summarizes more or less what he has said earlier here he is very clearly even stating that we will summarize okay so we will quickly go through we have got about 10 15 minutes so we we'll see we can finish the paragraph he is just summarizing all that we have read okay we have before we can proceed further to gather up that means to resume to resume it. all that has been said in its main principles okay the whole of the gita's gospel of works okay he is concentrating now on the gospel of works because gita also has a gospel of love okay and karma yoga karma yoga is the main but also the gnan yoga also so here he is talking of the gospel of works rests upon its idea of sacrifice the whole concept of sacrifice giving yourself to the divine is the highest and giving things which you have to the divine is lesser lesser until finally you are giving only physical thing which is the lowest he has told you that already whole of the gita's gospel of works 
rests upon its idea of sacrifice and contains, in fact, the eternal connecting truth of God and the world and worlds. Okay? So God is the highest and the world is the second. The transcendent is God. The world is the second level, cosmic, and works at the lowest level. Works means always at the lowest level because level one, because there is constant movement there and there is working, action. Okay. The human mind, the human mind seizes ordinarily only fragmentary notions and standpoints of a many-sided eternal truth of existence. Okay. Truth is many-sided and it is complex. I remember when I was reading uh, La Genèse Shuram by Suffering, he says in one place, truth is simple. It is the simplest of all. And I said, God, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> he is saying exactly the opposite here. Okay? So, it becomes simple when you realize the Purushottam. That is true. Everything falls into place. But you can't say that it is very, very simple. Truth is not simple. It is very complex. It's got so many aspects. Even the highest is Sat, Chit, Shakti, Ananda. It is four, not one. <laughs> so, this is what Sandra is saying. Many sided eternal truth of existence and builds upon them its various theories. See, even it's got theory also various of life and ethics and religion. Stressing this or that sign or appearance. Okay? But to some entirety of it, it must always tend to reawaken whenever it returns in an age of large enlightenment to any entire and synthetic religion of its world knowledge, its God knowledge, and self knowledge. So, world knowledge, level two, God knowledge, level three. Self-knowledge in the physical world, level one. In a certain sense, you can speak of it that the world is the cosmic, the God is the transcendent, and self is the individual. So we have to know all these. That's what the Gita wants. That's why the Purushottam. Okay, so. The gospel of the Gita reposes, reposes, reposes in French, it rests upon, takes its stand upon is settled upon this fundamental Vedic truth that all being is the one Brahman and all existence the wheel of Brahman. So what do you mean? This is the Advaita philosophy. Ekameva dvitiya. Ekameva adhvitiya. Okay? This is the fundamental Vedantic truth that all being is one Brahman and all existence the wheel of Brahman. Note the wheel suggests also the cyclical and also it suggests action. So the wheel of Brahman is the physical world where action is constant, eternal. There is no stopping Okay, at the, at the level one. Constant movement is there. That is the wheel of Brahman. But wheel also suggests that everything returns. And that is exactly what happens. Huh? You can see at all the levels, there is a constant wheel. Your body is coming from matter, and at the end of your life, it goes back into matter. It goes back. So there is a wheel. And also, it also applies to the vital. Your vital is coming from prana, universal prana, and going back into universal prana after dissolution of the death. Your soul also is coming from the supreme, and ultimately going back to the supreme. That doesn't mean to say that it disappears from manifestation. It need not. It can remain in the physical world and yet go back to the divine in consciousness. So, this wheel suggests that. It suggests two things. Constant action and also a, a constant returning to the origin. A divine movement opening out from God and returning to God. So here he is saying only 
the soul is coming from God and going back to the God. But you can apply this principle of will even to the body, even to matter. Now it goes out and it comes out from and goes back into wherever it is starting from. This is the now all is the expressive activity of nature. Now, there is a very interesting one. You have to very carefully see expressive activity of nature. All is the expressive activity of nature. A poem is an expression of the artist. Okay? A painting is the expression of the painter. A piece of music is the expression of what is inside a musician. So the physical world is an expression of the divine. So, whatever they name, he is expressive. All is all means everything, all existence is an expressive activity and not also activity. It's an expression which is constantly in movement, activity of nature, and nature, a power of the divine, which works out the consciousness and will of the divine soul, master of her works and inhabitant of her forms. So, whatever the divine is, wanting to do and directing to do, the nature carries that out. Nature is the executrix of the divine will. Level two is the executor of the divine will and level three. All is the expressive activity of nature and nature the power of the divine which works out the consciousness and will of the divine soul. And who is the divine soul? Master of our works and inhabitant of our forms. So master of the works, transcendent. Inhabitant, level one. He is there in everything. The one in the many. Okay. It is for his satisfaction that she descends into the absorption, the forms of things and works of life and mind and returns again through mind and self-knowledge to the conscious possession of the soul that dwells within her. Okay. So this is what is um, this is the, the, the theory of Purusha Prakriti. Everything that Prakriti does is for the enjoyment of the Purusha. This is one way of seeing. Now, Purusha is Chit and Prakriti is Shakti. So, at the highest level, they are one. So, you could think of it this way. The divine is creating the physical world for his own enjoyment. Okay? Because enjoyment, Ananda is a part of his, of his supreme soul. Okay? That's one way of looking at it. But in the lower level, because they become different, at the highest level, they are not different. You can think of it as the divine creating and enjoying himself. But at the lower level, there are two different things. So you can say that Prakriti is creating what is Prakriti creating? It is creating trees, it is creating animals, it is creating everything in the physical world. It is going on creating. Okay? It is creating human beings, it is creating all sorts of things. And the Purusha is enjoying what Prakriti is doing. Okay? That's what he is doing. It is for his satisfaction that she descends into the absorption of the forms of things, physical things, and the works of life and mind, and returns again through mind and self knowledge to the conscious possession of the soul that dwells within her. So that soul, the Purusha, is hiding in the bosom of Prakriti. Okay? Because in the cosmic also, the divine is there, no? So that's all. The cosmic is the Prakriti. But inside the Prakriti is hiding the Divine Master. So <laughs> that shows it very simple. There is, there is first an inv involving that is involution. There is first an involving of self and all it is or means in an evolution of phenomena. So first of all, the Divine involves himself and creates and involves himself in all that he is doing. That's an evol involution in an evolution of phenomena. There is afterwards an evolution of self, a revelation 
of all it is and means. He has told you about the wheel, so now he is explaining about the wheel. Everything is coming from the divine in evolution and everything is going back again to the divine evolution. The two cycles. Okay? So, a revelation of all that is hidden. All that is hidden and yet suggested by the phenomenon creation. So, <clears throat> in the physical world, the divine is hiding. So it is involved and it is hidden. But the evolution makes sure that everything is slowly being, that which is hidden is being shown. First of all, it shows matter, then it shows life, then it shows the capacity of mind, and it will go on further in. Okay. Another interesting note, suggested by the fundamental creation. In other words, everything that is there in the physical world is a symbol of the divine. Okay. Now, this is a very interesting thing. And some symbols are very clear, okay? like the ocean and the atmosphere. There is a gradation. At the lowest level of the ocean, there is darkness, there is density, there is hardly any light is possible. But as it keeps coming up, 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 light increases, density also decreases, and pressure also decreases until finally at the highest level, there is light. The same thing with the Atmosphere also. The atmosphere is dense below and above. It is you can float. You can liberate it from gravitation. So these are all the symbols. Now this is the principle that mother used also for naming the flowers. Because when suppose there is a flower, she wants to give it a name. What does it represent? What is it that is maintaining? Okay, the meaning of the flower. So she'll climb up and through that flower, she will go to the subtler planes where it's what it is representing becomes obvious to her and then she gives a name. Okay. Silence, faithfulness, sincerity, all these are all forms which are expressive of the higher. They are the archetypes and below are the, the, the final product in the evolution. Or rather the evolution. Evolution and evolution are very, very common, uh, very uh, complex. They are both involved in each other. So, then this cycle of nature, involution and evolution, this cycle of nature, note again, he is using a different word, cycle. Earlier he has said wheel. So, this cycle of nature could not be what it is, but for the Purusha. Assuming and maintaining simultaneously three eternal poises. The three eternal poises, transcendent, cosmic, and individual. This is all Sivanda is talking about the Gita. Of course, he agrees with this, but in the Gita's all suggestions. The mutable, immutable, and the Purushottama, this is both. Assuming and maintaining simultaneously. Three eternal points, each of which each of which is necessary to the totality of action. It must maintain itself in the mutable level one in the physical world. Mutable, everything is in mutating, and there we see it is infinite. The many, all existences, sarva bhutan. It appears to us as a finite personality. Personality with a P lowercase. So finite personality in meaning body mind life. Okay. Of these billion creatures with their infinite diversities and various relations. And it appears to us behind these as a soul and force of the action of the gods. Okay. So there's still about 15 lines left. So I think we'll not go to finish it. But this is the basic idea. Okay. And the real secret of all these three levels is to be found only in the Purushottama, which is the Uttamam Rahasya, the highest secret, the greatest secret is the, in the Purushottama. This little bit that is left, you can read for yourself. Then you can 
This is the supreme divine. Just one way, not one way. Yes, Vinay? Okay. Fine, we'll, uh, we'll cancel the class. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, I'll let him. I'll send a message to him just now. Okay. okay. No, no, no problem. No problem. So, we stop here today and also just note the two words pravritti and nivritti. Pravritti is movement. Vrit is a root and vritti means movement. And nivritti means no movement. So pravritti refers to level one where there is constant movement. And nivritti refers to the level two where there is no movement at all. But nivritti also has got another meaning. Okay? Nivritti means non-existence almost. Because when you go to level two, you experience the world as illusion. So that's why also another aspect of it. No okay, liberty, no existence at all. Everything seems to be okay. okay. So this is what the Gita is saying. And if you want, we'll do the last 10, 20, 10, 15 lines next time. But we have to stop here today. Prabhriti and Nivriti. Meet. Where do they meet? Level three. Okay. Movement and non-movement. The person aspect of the divine and the impersonal aspect of the divine. They meet in level three, are united, are possessed together, and in each other. Chit is in Shakti, Shakti is in Chit. Purusha is in Prakriti, Prakriti is in Purusha. And that's the reason why, if you want to understand the supermind, Mother says very clearly, the first thing is, you must make no difference between me and Sri Aurobindo. Okay? She represents the Prakriti and he represents the Purusha. So if you make a difference between the two, you will never be able to go to the Supermind. <laughs> and Supermind is Purushottam, level three. Okay? So, are united, possessed together and in each other. In God, that in God again, level three. All things find their secret truth and their absolute reconciliation. So everything that seems to be opposites or differences all get reconciled entirely in level three in God. This is the gist of the Gita as until what we have read now. That's what's in this. Okay. So we stop here today because there's a lot more. We have not spoken about love and there are so many other things that are also there. Okay. So we stop here today. Okay. Thank you, Ramadha. Have a nice day. Thank you, Ramadha.